हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट टुडे इट इज अवर थर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर फाइव बट बिफोर दैट लेट वी रिवाइज टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस लेक्चर सो वी डिस्कस अबाउट जेनेटिक्स इनहेरिटेंस वेरिएशन देन हिस्ट्री ऑफ जेनेटिक्स मोनो हाइब्रिड एंड डाई हाइब्रिड क्रॉस गिवन बाय मैंडल वी ऑल्सो लर्न अबाउट इनकम्प्लीट डोमिनेंस एंड टेस्ट क्रॉस विद द हेल्प ऑफ पुनेट स्क्वेर मैथड सो नाउ लेट वी बिगिन विथ अवर न्यू टॉपिक वी ऑल नो दैट फादर ऑफ मॉडर्न जेनेटिक्स इज ग्रीगोर जॉन मैंडल एंड ही गिव मोस्ट ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट लॉ ऑफ जेनेटिक्स ऑन हिज एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑन पी प्लांट बट His work was unrecognized till nineteenth century. So let me uh, discuss some of the reason behind it. First reason behind it is lack of communication. At that time, mobile phone and internet connection was not available. So there is a huge gap between the global world. Second. concept of factor and gene was new at that time so most of his colleagues could not accept his concept third reason is first time in biology he used mathematical logic so it was very difficult for the genetician to understand this concept and last one is no proof of existence of gene he could not source exact location of gene in the nucleus because at that time there was no invention of microscope now our next topic is chromosomal theory of inheritance so this theory was proposed by walter sutton and theodore boveri they studied on chromosomal movement during the meiosis meiosis it is a one type of cell division which is formed during the gamete formation during gamete formation the number of chromosome becomes half than the parent chromosome they studied that behavior movement of chromosome and behavior movement of gene was parallel in the nucleus and the knowledge of chromosomal segregation or chromosomal movement with mendelian law of segregation they gave theory of chromosomal inheritance according to the theory chromosome or gene are present in pair and during the gamete formation the pair of chromosome and gene separate and they becomes haploid in number but after the fertilization the number of chromosome restore as it is so let we understand that what is fertilization fertilization it means fusion of male and female gametes so during the gamete formation the number of chromosome becomes half but when the fertilization take place two two gametes they fuse and they becomes diploid so the number of chromosome remain same as in the progeny here you can see the table which shows comparison between the chromosome and gene so the first point is that both chromosome and gene occurs in pair second for the chromosome it segregate at a time of gamete formation such that only one of each pair is transmitted to a gametes and second point is for gene it segregated gamete formation and only one of each pair is transmitted to a gamete third point for the chromosome is it is independent pair which segregate independently to each other and third point for gene is one pair segregate independently to the another pair so these are the comparison between the chromosome and gene chromosomal theory of inheritance which was given by sutton and boveri was 
verified by T. H. Hunt Morgan. He studied on fruit fly or Drosophila melanogaster. In next video, you can see Morgan's work on Drosophila and how he derived the theory of linkage and recombination. So let's watch this video. What happens when you keep a peeled banana out in the open? The banana gradually deteriorates and we find several tiny creatures hovering over it. These tiny creatures are commonly called fruit flies. They're annoying, right? But did you know that these small wonders are one of the most powerful tools for geneticists? Sounds hard to believe, but these fruit flies are used as model organisms in genetics. Let me tell you an extremely important and unbelievable fact. Did you know that the common fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, and humans have genes that are almost 60% similar to each other? You heard me right. Just a total of 8 chromosomes in this tiny creature contains around 60% genes similar to the humans. And not only this, but the fruit fly is also used as a model to study the most serious neurodegenerative disorders including Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So this little creature is nothing short of a miracle for us. But who thought of using these tiny model organisms for experiments? The use of Drosophila melanogaster as model organisms dates back to several years. However, the organism rose to fame with the experiments to the father of experimental genetics, Thomas Hunt Morgan. Following Boveri and Sutton's chromosomal theory of inheritance, Morgan and his colleagues carried out many experiments on the common fruit fly which served as further confirmation for the theory. Let's have a look at what experiments he actually performed and what results he got. For that, let's travel back in time and reach the early years of the 20th century. It was around the early years of 1900s that Thomas Hunt Morgan started working on fruit flies with a determination to find something new. Did he really find something interesting? Yes, he did. One fine day, in a vial containing red-eyed flies, Morgan found something strange. He could spot a male fly with white-colored eyes. Morgan knew that this is a special type of mutant and the experiments with this will lead to a new path in genetics. So how did he plan his experiments? What was the procedure? Let's find that out in the next part. Imagine you're working in a lab with a little fruit fly. One fine day, you find an unusual mutant among the other wild types. The wild type means the ones normally found in nature or the natural forms to be precise. So the mutant form means the ones that have undergone some random or unusual changes. For example, red eye color is the natural or wild type of variety in fruit flies. But the white eye color is a mutant form. So what would you do if you find a mutant type of fruit fly in a vial one day? I am sure anyone would simply grab the opportunity and begin experimenting with this unique variety. The father of experimental genetics, Thomas Hunt Morgan, was not an exception to this. One fine day, he found a unique mutant in one of his vials while working in the lab. The mutant was a white-eyed male fruit fly. Soon he realized that the exclusive mutant was an ideal model for carrying several experiments that would lead us to new paths in genetics. Let's begin understanding how Morgan carried out his famous experiments on the fruit fly which later proved the chromosomal theory of inheritance better. Morgan crossed the white-eyed male with a wild type, that is a red-eyed female. The F1 generation had all the offsprings with red-coloured eyes. This showed that red eye colour is a dominant trait. Okay, so what's next then? 
Morgan stepped ahead to cross the F1 hybrids. What he expected was a 3 to 1 ratio. That is what we get in the F2 generation, right? And what should the genotypic ratio be? It should be 1 to 2 to 1. And is this what Morgan obtained? Yes, Morgan obtained 3 red-eyed flies and 1 white-eyed fly in the F2 generation. Also, the genotypic ratio was 1 to 2 to 1. These results suggest that Mendel's experiments were correct? Kind of. Mendel had obtained ratios for plants. Here, we considered animals for the experiment. That is why, although Morgan had obtained the ratios just like Mendel did, things didn't end here. Morgan obtained only one white-eyed fly in the F2 generation. But note that this fly is a male. This unfolds a lot of hidden ambiguities. Why didn't he obtain a white-eyed female? Did this hint at something? That's a right guess. The results not only gave a proof of the chromosomal theory of inheritance, but also helped in shining light on newer concepts. Morgan assumed that the eye color genes that are passed down the generation are sex-linked. Now what could this be? Let's get introduced to this term first. We know that chromosomes in organisms are of two parts. One type is called autosomes, which are simply not the sex chromosomes. And the second category is the sex chromosomes themselves, which determine the sex of the organism. These chromosomes are usually represented with the letters X and Y. In most organisms, individuals with X chromosomes are females, while individuals with one X and one Y are males. Getting back to our concept, sex-linked implies the characters or traits linked to the sex chromosomes. So the characters which usually pass down the generations with respect to a particular sex will be sex-linked. So in this case, Morgan did not stop at the fact that his results confirmed the chromosomal theory. He went a step ahead and put forth the assumption that the genes for eye color are present on the X chromosome in the fruit fly. In the next part, let's understand what Morgan had to say about this. We are in the midst of studying Thomas Morgan's experiment. We have seen so far that Morgan crossed a white-eyed male with a red-eyed female, which is the wild type. The F1 generation had all the offsprings with red-colored eyes. Also, when he obtained the F2 generation, it made him assume that the genes for eye color are present on the X chromosome in the fruit flies. Now, to understand this better, let's carry out a theoretical cross. To begin with, let's denote the chromosomes as X and Y for representation purposes. But if we use X and Y to represent the chromosomes, then how do we represent the genes on these chromosomes? For that, we will write additional letters in superscript. So let's say we write the letter W in lowercase to represent the genes for white-colored eyes. The red-eyed phenotype will then be represented by the letter W in lowercase having a plus sign after it. Do you think this representation is strange? Well, that's how it's usually done in genetics. The first letter of the mutant type is used for denoting the alleles. Hence, we use the letter W for representing the mutant allele for white eyes. We simply add the plus sign to it to denote the wild type. So instead of using the letter R for red eye color, we use W+. Also, we need to know that the wild type, which is the red-eyed trait, is dominant over the mutant type, which is the white eye trait. Getting back to the experiment, Morgan assumed that the genes for the trait are present on the X chromosome. Let's also assume the same and begin crossing and see if we get the same results. 
So we have the X with W in lowercase for representing the genes that give white colored eyes. And we have X with W plus for representing the wild type that is the red colored eyes. Now we begin the crossing of the white eyed male with the red eyed female. The cross yields all the offsprings with red eyes in the F1 generation. This is how the genes are passed to the progeny. Now the next step is crossing the offsprings from this F1 generation. On crossing these two with red eyes, we get a progeny that is in the ratio 3 to 1. So we've got three that are red eyed and one that's white eyed. To be precise, we obtain one male with red eyes and two females which are red eyed. The only white eyed fly is this male here. If you remember, Morgan obtained the same result. So this assumption that we made give us the same results as the Morgan's cross. Hence the assumption that the genes for eye color were present on the X chromosome in fruit flies is correct. Now what if the alleles would have been present on the Y chromosome? Then the trait would have been visible only in males. That's because in organisms like Drosophila, males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome and females have both X chromosomes. To summarize, this experiment helped Morgan to prove that genes are present on chromosomes. Also, he could find out that the genes for eye color were present on the X chromosome in the fruit fly. This also indicated the fact that genes are passed from one generation to the other. This is how Mendelian genetics as well as Sutton and Bovary's chromosomal theory of inheritance were both proved better with Morgan's experiments. From this video, we learned that Morgan carried out several crosses in Drosophila to study genes that were linked in sex chromosome. Morgan coined the term linkage for the sex link chromosome. The physical association of gene on chromosome is termed as recombination. So recombination it is a process in which the exchange of gene occurs on the chromosome. His student Alfred Sturtwent used the frequency of recombination between gene pairs on the same chromosome to measure the distance between the gene and map their position on chromosome. So with the help of gene map we can know about the exact location of gene on chromosome. Today, genetic maps are extensively used as a starting point in the sequencing of whole genome and we will study human genome project in biotechnology chapter. I hope you all are doing your homework regularly and you must have to submit your homework at given whatsapp number till tomorrow between 8 to 1 o'clock.